Hello YouTube, this is Ahoy. So, on this uh, demonstration I won't be going through why I do stuff, but it's more of a walkthrough, like, of what I do. So, you know, try to follow and, you know, for example, I'm not telling you why I'm using only this few amount of plugins, and I think the most that I use is three per track and most of the tracks don't have any so you know get the sound good at the source and and then the result will be good all right hello youtube this is Ahoy. so this week i'm going to mix and let's see what we have here so i'm going to be using the sinking charlie tongues uh, raw tracks that I recorded with them in at Finwax B Studio since it has been a few months I actually don't remember what we have here so that's why I'm also going to show you how you should transfer your sessions so it makes sense anyway here we have the uh, open zip file here we have the sample files so here are the bass drums, so when you just toss them in the session, they are the raw tracks, so you can slice and mix them however you want. Same for the others. And, and here we have a rough mix. And here we have a readme file. And it says, wh what is the name of the song, the band, tempo, some key, you know, for auto-tune and stuff. What are the drum stuff? And I have clearly said that it's at audience perspective. And that the bass tracks might not be totally face aligned. So you should check the face when you are blending the tracks together. And that the guitars are in pairs. And the last one is in mono. And the vocals, uh, the first two tracks are screaming vocals and then the rest are clean vocals and for the tracks i have split them into five folders here are the drums here's the bass guitars as you can see i used a sm57 and us7 on the cabinet and then there's the dia track for all the tracks and then there's synths and vocals okay but I'll transfer these tracks to the session and let's continue there. All right, and now we are here in Pro Tools and I have imported and color recorded everything. So all these yellow ones are subgroups or aux tracks. And how it works is that I have used yellow or for the closed mics orange for the not closed mic drums and the brown for the triggers and samples but i won't be using triggers in this video we'll talk about that on a later date and then for the bass i use green and for the guitars i use blue i separated the colors by guitar and then for the synths I used purple and dark purple for the tambourine. It should be brown, but because I don't have any other percussion instruments, I have just put them in the keyboard section. Then for the vocals, I have the screaming vocals, which were one and two, at, at red and pink for the clean vocals. Anyway, so this is the raw tracks with everything panned mono and everything going to the main sub. So these are not routed to the sub groups yet. So let's listen what we actually have here. I have uh, muted the trigger tracks. Okay, we 
we have, you know, that kind of thingy. And first, what we'll do is that I'll just route everything to their correct buses. Okay, so now everything should be in their correct buses. So if I just show only the aux tracks and yep seems to be working just right okay so what i will start with is that i will actually pull down all the faders let's start from there you know from clean slate Okay, so uh, let's start with getting just a basic balance with our mix. I'm using the narrow view because I have such large amount of tracks, but I hope you figure out where we are.
Okay, so now we have like all the tracks open and I think I won't be using the bass reamp channel. I liked how the original one sounded. And first, uh, let's start with the like what needs to be done. And for that we need to listen. Okay, first thing I noticed that uh, when we get to the, I think it's breakdown, uh, the bass drum starts to disappear, so let's go there. Okay, then let's check for a spot with the uh, toms. So we have them here. And since this is in the audience perspective, I'll pan them out just a bit. And I won't be using the closed mics symbols uh, quite much because I kind of like how just the overheads sound. But you know, they are there in case the mixer would want to use them. So let's continue listening. Okay, maybe let's start with the screaming vocals because many people wanted to hear that stuff. Let's loop this part and we'll work on the lead screaming vocal. Like I am 
you know, I could just fly with that, but I will just want to try something else because I did use the U87 and a uh, Universal Audio uh, 610 when we were recording, so it sounds okay already. Uh, so let's use the where is it? If we want some more grit out of it, let's use this one. Maybe a bit too much. So let's take it off and try something else. Smashing, missing models, they call you by your name. Oh, forgive me. Yeah, that sounds kind of okay. Smashing, missing models. They call you by your name Lord forgive me Let's I reside a bit You know I dulled it down just a bit so I'll just bring it up just a bit We love you praise of stars What in the neighbors want us to hide Messed up my command Sounds kind of okay. Then let's move on to the base. I think I'll just mute the DI track also, but I might bring it up later. Smashing, missing models. They call you by your name. Lord, forgive me. Smash 
I think I might have some face problems in my kick drums, so let me check. Nope, seems to be fine. Smashing missing models They call you by your name And actually, if someone is wondering this kind of Only using one sample For the kick drum sample is very old school style And I know that a few old school engineers does that And, but the thing is that when you blend it with the natural kick drum, you get the dynamics from it. So you are basically using the sample just for the consistency of the attack. So. Let's try to work on the kick drum. Smashing, missing models. They call you by your name. Lord, forgive me. Let's hide inside a bit. May you not fall out. I 
Machine missing models They call you by your name Lord forgive me The siren sign of it May out of power Smashing missing models I hear there's uh, quite a lot of mud in the guitar, so I'll just try to carve it out. I think I just need one band for that. Okay, now I notice that I don't hear the low end of the kick drum uh, at all. So what I'll do is that I'll solo these 
and check if I need to high pass everything else except the kick drums. Definitely. Okay, then we need to do something for the lead vocals. Let's try just this. Let's continue.
all right because this song has such a uh intensive tempo i think i might actually do it so that the bass has all the low end and the kick goes above it so let's take the high pass filter off from here and let's put it here eq one band 80 hertz high pass Okay, since the toms seem to have quite a lot of bleed, I'll clean them up really quickly. So if in case you're wondering, I'm just using depth to transient, then cutting, making a fade out and removing everything and going left to right. So And even though the out zoom shows that I might be actually cutting, I'm not cutting anything out. So it's just a graphical thing. All right, let's check how's the sound now. Seems better. We don't need those tracks, so I'll just disable them. And 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 what else? Oh yeah, the scenes in the chorus. I didn't hear them at all. Let's try something we haven't tried yet. So let's see. Uh, let's use that one. <laughs> Uh, 
and do notice that the whole mix currently is dry so there is no effects yet next thing what I'll do is that I'll add some delay and because this mix is so dense it might not have actually much space for stuff like reverb so but let's put it in there anyway and the best way to assign this is to press command option shift select free bus and bam they are Okay, so here are our effects. Let's use some nice color like blue because it's free. So multi-channel uh, delay, H delay, I like that one. So let's use it from the, there. Vocal delay. use a doubler I really like this one where is it Okay, so for the reverb, uh, what should I use? I'll just use the reverb. I really like it. I know many people hate it, but I like it. Yeah, something like that. And then let's use it for the doubler and delay also.
So basically it seems that the Vocal 6 is the lead on the... So I'll just compress that one a bit more. I really hate Pro Tools. than one hour we have a very basic rough mix without any automation i hope this somehow cleared to how i do my mixes as you can see there's not a lot of stuff going on there and i'll actually use the reverb for the toms too because they play so seldomly let's see how it sounds Uh, where do we have toms? We have toms there. <laughs> Looks like we might need to do something for the toms before we stop. So let's compress them just a tad. Yeah, way too much reverb. And in case you were wondering, you know why I'm not using EQ, it's because I used it when I was uh, recording. So I was using, you know, analog SSL instead of plugins, and I like how they sound, so that's it, that's why. Oh,
Okay, and then let's check how loud the mix is. Should be you know loud enough for heavy metal so i hope you somehow managed to get something out of the work process that how i mix stuff as you can see i have i use plugins then i bypass them you know take them off because it's a game of uh, hit or miss and you know because i had like quite good source sound so I didn't have much problem with them so I hope you enjoyed this demonstration uh, thank you for watching and make good music